remember tech demos? Those little 3D applications that chip makers would release to show off their new graphics chips? These were some of the most iconic little pieces of software in the PC gaming world back in the day, and a spring of nostalgia for anyone looking back on retro hardware. In some cases, they were almost mascots for each graphics card generation, often used on box art, manuals, fan shroud stickers, and much of the marketing and presentation slides shown both internally and to the public by graphics chip companies. Why were they so iconic in their day, and what was the real purpose for them, and why have they largely disappeared? Sit back and relax as we take a casual look at the lost art of tech demos. This is Pixel Pipes. If you really want to go back to the origin of tech demos, you really have to look at the demo scene. Back in the 80s and 90s, hackers and programmers would create demos for 8 and 16-bit home computers to show off to friends, and even participate in competitions. To some extent, this still goes on and has produced amazing results you wouldn't have ever thought possible in such hardware. And heck, if you want to go back further, events like SIGGRAPH would see the beginnings of Pixar and other major computer graphics luminaries who made their mark for showing what computers could do in the visual medium. But that's getting way beyond the scope of this video. What I'm talking about are real-time tech demos officially released by graphics chip makers that showed off the newest rendering features and level of visual quality achievable with the power of their latest products. Oftentimes when you purchased a new graphics card, these were the only ways to see the true potential of your hard-earned investment, since games typically lagged years behind the introduction of new features. In some cases, you would never see games that looked as good as tech demos, at least those that could still run well or even support your graphics card in the years it took to implement its features. Tech demos could be made much more quickly and were specially optimized for a specific chip architecture, and by lacking the underlying demands of a real interactive game, they could run dramatically better than anything else out there given the quality they produced. In that sense, you could argue they created an unrealistic expectation for graphics chip's capabilities, but it was still an extremely cool treat that made customers feel good about their purchase. What follows is a walk through some of the most iconic, memorable, and noteworthy tech demos produced over the past 20 plus years for consumer desktop graphics cards. There's no way I could include every single one ever made, so if you don't see one that you think should be mentioned, feel free to do so down in the comments section below. The footage you're about to see is all captured by me directly from my own hardware, unless very obviously shown to be otherwise. We begin our journey in 1996, at the start of the 3D acceleration craze. 3DFX was a brand new upstart from veterans of SGI and other major tech corporations, with the ambition of taking six-figure workstation quality graphics and squeezing it down to a single affordable graphics card that people could install on an ordinary PC. Needless to say, they had a lot to prove. One of the most famous demos was this one, titled Valley of Raw, which was unique among tech demos for being one of the few to be interactive, showcasing a simulation of what a fighting game could look like with their new Voodoo chipset. Using the keyboard, two people could perform fighting moves on each other, and while it was more a proof of concept than anything else, the graphics at the time were stunning, putting to rest any doubt among skeptics that what 3DFX set out to do was even possible. Anubis on the left was particularly impressive, emblazoned with reflection maps giving him a shiny appearance, something only previously seen in offline renderings in movies and commercials. Running this demo, the Voodoo could stand side by side with SGI's reality engine at a tiny fraction of the cost, making the pint-sized 3D powerhouse an easy sell. 3DFX at the time relied heavily on tech demos like these to showcase their first 3D architecture, not just for consumers, but even more so for game developers and investors. Seen here is another demo showing a potential racing title. This demo was novel for being able to show the difference between software and hardware rendering at the same time. What the public saw was only a small portion of the demos 3DFX developed for the Voodoo line of graphics cards, with many having been lost to time. This one is called Wizard's Tower, and showcases different rooms all featuring different colored lighting, which you can actually walk through using the keyboard, and if you so choose, activate enemy bats by pressing B and shoot them with space. Like Valley of Raw, it's really more a proof of concept than a functional game.
but 3DFX wasn't alone in the market, with Rendition also receiving a lot of attention for their first accelerator, the Verite V1000E earlier that year. One of the most impressive demos I've seen on the hardware is this one, called simply Cartoon, which used OpenGL to showcase what is perhaps the earliest example of what would later be known as cell shading running in real time. I'm cheating a little bit with this one though, as while this demo was developed under Rendition's official guidance to showcase the company's hardware, specifically the V2000 series, it was actually made by an amateur programmer as an entry into Rendition's Take It to the Red Line contest, which took place in 1998. Because it uses OpenGL, it can actually run on other similar hardware of that same era. But the fact that it can run on Rendition's original V1000 based graphics chip from 1996 is nonetheless very impressive. Incidentally, Incidentally, this demo plays second in the contest. Another early demo comes from ATI, titled simply Night Demo from 1997. This actually represents the oldest tech demo I've been able to find from ATI, and it utilizes the features of the proprietary API called ATI 3DC Interface, often just shortened as CIF. This was made for their early 3D Rage series of accelerators, and this demo will run on either Rage 2 or Rage Pro series cards, showing off single pass texture compositing, which creates the effect of the stone statue coming to life, as well as alpha shadows and alpha blending for the wings of the dragon. Although if you let the demo loop a second time instead of the dragon, you see the knight get randomly sucked into the ground, which is rather amusing. Later in 1998, ATI would completely overhaul the graphics architecture with the Rage 128 series, and to correspond with that, they released the Rage Dawning demo, developed by 3D Forge, which was a division of Future Mark, interestingly. This demo is a huge step up from the previous one, and this is the first of the ones I've seen to incorporate music as part of the presentation, taking a cue straight out of the demo scene world. The demo showcases an orb of light which traverses the canyon, casting real-time lighting across the landscape over top a reflective river and various particle effects, before eventually making its way to a temple where it seems to awaken some sort of ancient Egyptian warrior adorned with many more graphical effects. Here is the full demo unedited for your enjoyment, but feel free to skip ahead using the markers in the progress bar below, or the timestamps in the description.
Meanwhile, 3DFX would continue to showcase their hardware with impressive demos for their Voodoo 2 line, though again, not many of the more impressive demos still exist today, and we're left with more simplistic demos showing off one effect or another. But before the close of the 90s, Matrox would enter the high-end gaming market with their G400 series cards, and with it they gave us what is perhaps the most impressive tech demo of the decade, showing off their new environment map bump mapping technology. The effect is used to give the water a realistic looking surface, but the demo also shows off colored lighting, lots of particles, and real-time shadows. Once again, here's the full demo from start to finish, unedited. Nvidia introduced their first GeForce that year, and while undoubtedly the most powerful graphics card of 1999, the demos they created for it were more simplistic, showing off one or two effects at a time, such as this grass demo which showcased lots of geometry, or this bubble demo which shows a neat looking cube mapped effect. I do like this crystal ball demo though, which actually incorporates music, and has a few good effects happening at once, including cube mapping and an impressive amount of geometry which allows you to zoom in from an outside view straight into the crystal ball to view the castle inside up close, which itself is finely detailed. It was also the first to include menu options within the demo for changing various parameters and showing off different animations and rendering modes, a feature which would later be a staple of Nvidia's demos for the next several years. Nvidia's demos in 2000 were even more impressive, bringing to light the capabilities of the GeForce 2 series, which actually didn't differ that much from the GeForce 256 of the previous year, but had more performance to actually utilize them to a greater degree. While you still had some simplistic demos like Grove here, which showed off the hardware transform and lighting, or this lightning demo, which showed off per pixel lighting, you also had this thing. It's just called Creature, which is apt, I suppose, but Good gravy is it ugly. I guess that's the idea though, but I can't imagine you'd actually want to stare at this thing for too long. Too bad, because it does show off a lot of impressive features for the time, a very high geometry count, some impressive lighting and texturing effects, and so on. FX had one last shot that year with their Voodoo 5 5500, and their latest hardware feature, the T-Buffer, had a lot of potential for new effects that they wanted to display, such as motion blur and depth of field. One demo called Rocket Burger actually showed an environment with flying cars zipping around, featuring the aforementioned motion blur, depth of field, as well as anti-aliasing, which was perhaps the biggest selling point of the T-Buffer technology. While one of the better tech demos to come out of 3D effects, there's no sound effects or music, and it's certainly not as impressive on the whole as some of the previous demos we've looked at. 
It is still noteworthy, however, and to do effects like these on competing hardware all at once would have been debilitating on performance, which is exactly the point 3DFX wanted to make here. But in my opinion, ATI blew everyone else out of the water in 2000 with a demo that showcased the power of their all new Radeon series of graphics cards called Radeon's Arc. This demo is a cavalcade of cutting edge effects, outdoing Matrox with the use of environment map bump mapping, which can be seen all over the floors of this demo, in addition to detailed textures, reflections, water effects, light maps, and others. There's also a geometrically complex female character, which may not look familiar to you, but has a familiar name. This is actually the first appearance of Ruby. Here's the entire demo from start to finish. Possible leak in tank 7. Radiation check required on aquarium level. Cucaloris Galaxy. Then we get to 2001, and thanks to NVIDIA's GeForce 3 series, the introduction of programmable shaders. Up until this point, the effects we've seen had to be hardwired into the graphics chip, but programmable shading promised to allow developers the chance to configure their own effects via a new programming language called HLSL, or High Level Shader Language. 
gamers got their first glimpse of this new technology via tech demos, and Nvidia made a few of their own for the GeForce 3. The Zoltar demo was relatively simple, but it showed off the most advanced character rendering of the time, and came with a slew of pithy comments dispensed by clicking on the gem in the corner. It takes a big man to cry, but it takes a bigger man to laugh at that man. But the more famous demo for the GeForce 3 was the one they showed the most, and that was Chameleon. This demo wasn't especially elaborate from a presentational standpoint, but it was very impressive nonetheless with various skin shading techniques on display as the Chameleon walked along the branch, with the most impressive one undoubtedly being the Predator-style transparency effect. Nvidia even turned it into a benchmark of sorts for measuring pixel shading performance. Then came ATI with the Radeon 8500, and this year would be the largest showing of tech demos in the history of the company, with no less than 8 demos for the new programmable architecture. That's honestly too many to show here, but here are the highlights. First up we have the nature demo, which is suitably peaceful and simplistic with some very nice water reflections and refractions in the stream, and a fairly large amount of environmental geometry. Next we have Rachel, which is seemingly ATI's response to Zoltair, although lacking a bit in the personality department, though it is much more realistic looking. Hi. Ah. My name is Rachel. Ah, uh, hello, Rachel. I'm a virtual person. Oh. Brought to you from Life FX, presented through ATI's new Radeon graphics card. Isn't this great? Wow. Uh, I'm extremely creeped out, so let's move on. ATI also released a series of island demos, and these are much more my kind of thing. There are three demos in all, and each one depicts a weird alien environment, but I remember running these demos on my Radeon 9100 and being way more entertained than I probably should have been. There were tons of lighting effects, real-time shadows, normal maps, shaded surfaces and reflections, water refractions, just tons of things, and each one had a pretty nifty music track to go with it. I won't show them all, but here's my favorite one, Island 2. Videos on the others can be readily found elsewhere if you're curious. In 2002 brought about the launch of the GeForce 4 series, a mostly enhanced version of the previous GeForce 3 series, and so while it only supported marginally improved features, it did support a lot more horsepower to do them justice. Nvidia put out a new set of demos to show this off, and a couple of them are pretty memorable. This one, Tidepole, isn't so much, but I suppose the water effects here are neat. 
Werewolf, however, is much more interesting. He doesn't do much except lumber along the narrow street, occasionally running or stomping to howl or scratch himself, but the fur effects here are very novel for the time, though it's clear every bit of the GPU's power was spent on it as the environment is sparse, to say the least. The squid demo is a lot more cool in my opinion, featuring an intricate, shiny robotic cephalopod like something out of the mind's eye. The squid changes colors as it swims along a rich bed of seaweed, tentacles whipping in a rhythmic pattern as the wheels and shafts spin inside its transparent body. For its time, this was perhaps the most complex real-time character on the home PC, and it's still a visual treat to this day. Matrox made one final attempt to enter the PC gaming market that year, with their line of Perhelia 512 cards. These cards had a couple of interesting features, though in terms of rendering tech, they didn't have much to show over other competing offerings. Nonetheless, they made a demo for the new architecture called Perhelia Reap. It's a decent looking demo for what it is, but thanks to a series of compatibility issues and time constraints, I was forced to reference this footage from Phil's computer lab, even though I have a Perhelia card. But later that year, ATI would release the Radeon 9700 Pro, one of the most revolutionary graphics cards of the decade. With it came DirectX 9, and a tantalizing range of possibilities opened up to developers, of which ATI was keen to demonstrate. Some are fairly simple, like this one of a bear showing much more complex lighting and fur shading techniques than seen on the werewolf, as well as this artistic shading demo which again, looked very impressive and was much more complex than any previous cell shading style renderings done before. He also had one of the first demos for HDR lighting with this Marvels demo, easily the most photorealistic lighting we've seen on the PC up to that point. But the demo that took everyone by storm was this one.
This was Pipe Dream, a real-time rendition of a 3D animation done by a group called Animusic in 2001, just two years prior. Not only did this demo rival the sort of thing computers were only capable of doing offline just a short time before, it was also an imaginative and mesmerizing take on musical animation. Animusic have actually done an entire album of this sort, titled A Computer Animation Video Album, and it's this sequence, track number 5, that is their most famous. Intel even attempted to recreate Pipe Dream in real life at the Intel Developer Forum 2011, an extremely complex undertaking that utilized Atom processors to control the presentation, probably the only time anyone is ever impressed by an Atom CPU. Pipe Dream was also the key inspiration behind one of the most famous videos on YouTube, Winter Gotten's Marble Machine, the successor to which has been under development for the past two years. To say Pipe Dream has had a cult following would be an understatement, and even if ATI's real-time rendition of it is only an affectionate nod to an iconic masterpiece, it's an incredibly memorable one nonetheless. Two thousand three would also play host to a number of memorable demos from NVIDIA to coincide with the launch of their first Red Dex Nine products, the GeForce FX series. While it's hard to compete with something like Pipe Dream, NVIDIA's FX demos were not to be overlooked, and they are perhaps among the best the company has ever produced. There are at least seven demos in all, and they each display some of the most impressive graphics you'll ever see running on an FX GPU, drastically overselling its potential. Of course, we have to start with the star of the line. Dawn, a seemingly unassuming fairy with some very prominent uh, features. Yes, sex does indeed sell, and that seemed to be the primary motivation here, but this was also the most impressive rendering of a human-like character we had seen thus far, at least in real time. There were also a slew of sliders for subtly changing her facial expression or even the amount of goosebumps or uh, oil on her skin. It's also probably necessary to point out that NVIDIA actually got in a lot of hot water over this demo since the realistic human features extended beyond what you saw on the surface, and by simply deleting a few files, you could quite easily uncover and reveal a pair of fully textured and modeled uh, memory banks. That was uh, certainly very grown up of you, NVIDIA. But hey, not like the target male demographic of teens to 20-somethings were complaining. Hell, they produce patches just to go ahead and go the full Monty, so to say. Certainly not something that I'd know anything about. And anyway, Dawn's sister Dusk was way cuter. Uh, <clears throat> this demo is arguably more advanced with a more complex backdrop and shadowing techniques. This time situating the fairy in an urban setting, Dusk of course enjoys the nightlife, and though she can't mingle among the humans, she can at least spend her evenings on rooftops enjoying the music popping out of their clubs. She's also just as big as a human, which is an interesting artistic choice, but I digress. On the less salacious side of things, you have Ogre, which like Pipe Dream is a recreation of an offline rendering, this time by Spellcraft Studio entitled, Yeah, The Movie. The Ogre uses advanced skin shading and an adaptive mesh system and real-time shadow maps and motion blur. Though short, it's still pretty enjoyable and morbidly humorous. Even more innocent is Toys, an interesting demo which depicts two boys videotaping their toys as they play out a scene. A lot like something I'd do as a kid, actually. Though dated looking now, the depth of field effect to simulate an old cheap camera lens was pretty impressive, and the twist at the end, if you want to call it that, is pretty entertaining as well. The tang! Kill him with the tang! I trust you, ah! You're doing it wrong, loser! Alright, jeez! No! 
Humans, we surrender, Yay. we surrender. Time for lunch. Coming, Mom. There was also Last Chance Gas, which demonstrates soft shadows and some pretty detailed textures. This demo was meant to prove that the FX series could render movie-like CG in real time. But don't let the smooth frame rate here fool you. This is running on a 7800 GTX, and if you were to actually run this on, say, a 5900 Ultra, it actually runs pretty poorly. The last FX series demo we'll show was Vulcan, which no, isn't using the modern API of the same name as that wouldn't come out until years later. Vulcan instead shows a blacksmith of the underworld who attempts to forge a weapon before encountering some sort of firefly, after which hilarity ensues. The particle effects, lighting, and animated fire textures in this demo still hold up pretty well, I think. ATI would close out the year with a few more demos for use with the Radeon 9800 series. One of which was a working clock screensaver, which you can see here. The other was this chimp demo, which took the fur rendering of the older bear demo to the next level. but 2004 would come along and really revolutionize things. We've got to start with Nvidia's 6800 series demos, like this one called Clear Sailing. Yep, that's a nice looking water. Of course, the one everyone remembers and the one that really became emblematic of the G46 series was Nalu. While perhaps making a demo starring a pastel colored mermaid is an interesting choice for an ostensibly male dominated consumer base, in a way it makes sense as Nvidia really wanted to show off the raw geometry capabilities of the NV40 GPU using a character with long hair, and to animate that hair in a slow and less computationally complex manner while still looking fairly realistic, putting it in the water is a solid choice. Or liquid choice perhaps.
The other demo released for the series was Timbury, another interesting character, but a pretty impressive showing of rendering techniques which much more closely resembled what you'd see in 3D animated movies of the time. ATI's tech demos for the same year aren't as impressive. For the X-800 series, there's a simple demo showing a giant crowd of World War I era soldiers, and another showing off subsurface lighting. Oh, and I guess there's also this one. It's a pleasure to see you again. Save it, Optico. Do you have what I want? Did I say not as impressive? Sorry, I meant absolutely awesome. This was Double Cross, and it signaled a new start for the character of Ruby, reimagined as a secret agent adorned with ATI red hair and the Laura Croft-like attitude. While other tech demo characters would sometimes serve as mascots for a single series, Ruby was now ATI's mascot for the rest of their existence. This was really more than just a highly marketable way to show off ATI's latest GPUs. This was the start of a new era and attitude for the company. When ATI released the Refresh XA50 series, they released a sequel of sorts, Dangerous Curves. In terms of action and story, it's not as complex as Double Cross, but in terms of rendering techniques, it's just as intense, with heavy use of sophisticated depth of field and motion blur. In 2005, NVIDIA would advance the G46 architecture for the release of the G47 series. Nalu was replaced by the anagram Luna, and in place of a mermaid, you had a woman with superpowers who makes her hair float with magic instead of water. The designs of the creatures and environments here are actually really bizarre, but in an interesting way. Yeah. <laughs> 
The Tim Burry of this generation, however, is Mad Mod Mike. Let's be honest, he steals the show. Just watch. should ever have to play on a system like this. Well, originally, you know, I was going to try out for the uh, Tooth Fairy job, but uh, I found out you don't really get to pull the teeth. You know, the parents do it. I'm kind of a hands-on guy. I couldn't be happier with how this mod turned out. The heart of this beast is a custom assembly of madly overclocked SOI-enabled NVIDIA GeForce GPUs. The chrome flames add a touch of class, a counterbalance to the awesome fire that burns within. My work here is done. Good gaming, Gabby. Good game. Thank you, Mad Mod Yeah, me and the mermaid, yeah, that's definitely gonna happen. I remember Mad Mod Mike was easily the best demo NVIDIA had put out in some years, just in terms of the sheer entertainment value. ATI wasn't done, however. They had their own new generation of cards to compete against the G47 series, and one more chapter in Ruby's story to tell. In The Assassin, Ruby faces off against Optigo for a final time, only to discover an even more dangerous enemy lurking behind. It is ready. Optigo, now we will finish this. Ruby, you always surprise me. <laughs> While the models remain largely the same, you can see that the lighting has received a huge upgrade over the previous demos. The Assassin is just gorgeous on every technical level, and it's amazing that something of this quality could be rendered in 2005 in real time. The X1000 series saw one other impressive looking demo, but with a completely different vibe from ATI's Spy series. The toy shop was all about ambience, depicting a city at night under a heavy rainstorm. A soft blues rift plays in the background as the camera slowly moves over a building, revealing a small storefront selling toys. A taxi cab is the only sign of life, while rain pelts the brick and cement of the surrounding structures, rendered using a brand new parallax bump mapping technique. The drops of the water streak down the windows with a procedurally generated animation, done entirely inside the GPU. This is a demo you can really chill out to, and it even has a second mode where the camera follows the cab. ATI was soon swallowed up by AMD after that, and with it came the last publicly available demo featuring Ruby. Right, 
Recon reports. Sees a lot of activity close to our HQ. I know, I know. I'm telling you, Ruby. I've got a bad feeling about this. <sighs> I'm not surprised. You always say that. Okay, I think I can put her down over there. Hmm. I was thinking something. A little faster. All right, Daredevil. Settle down. <laughs> You're always making my life difficult. Wouldn't want to disappoint you. <laughs> you never do. Computer, on. Command confirmed. Welcome, Ruby. Mountain grid. Highlight, grid four. Our missiles. It's my turn. The demo titled Wipeout was showcased for the HD 2000 series, taking advantage of its new DirectX 10 features. As ATI put it, 128 morph targets were used to animate Ruby's face, including crease maps on her brow, eyes, mouth, and chin. HDR lighting as well as advanced light scattering were used to replicate the look of snow and ice. Beyond this, AMD would produce much simpler demos for future graphics cards, like the HD 5800 series. It wouldn't be until 2013 when we'd see Ruby again, this time with an entirely different look and inferior accent, and using CryEngine 3 as the technology base running on the R9 290 series. While impressive, as far as I know, this demo was only shown at events and never released to the public, which is a real shame. To this day, this is Ruby's last appearance in an animated presentation. Nvidia would continue producing tech demos, but with much less fanfare. After the GeForce 7900 GTX, we had the GeForce 8800 GTX, another revolutionary product that more than doubled the performance available, and I suppose it would have ballooned the cost of producing a story-driven short like Mad Mod Mike. Tech demos for the GeForce 8 series did exist, of course, continuing the trend of marketing sex appeal by employing the likeness of fashion model Adrienne Curry, which was certainly a lifelike depiction, but otherwise pretty lackluster. Even more lifelike was the human head demo, which features some really dang impressive skin shading and lighting tech, but I mean, it's just a head. It doesn't even animate. You did have Froggy, however, which not only moved, but was interactive. You could slap and stretch the poor frog in any number of ways, and aside from some very advanced skin shading, the environment was also pretty nice looking. But probably the last demo and video would produce that depicted any sort of story was Medusa. It's an old tale, but never one that's been run in real time before. The demo features advanced facial animation using what are called blend shapes stored in texture buffers, and a dynamic stone growing effect done through geometry shaders. This was the only demo made for the GTX 200 series.
While not story-driven, another popular demo was Supersonic Sled, made for the GTX 400 series, which not only featured hilarious animation, but was also interactive, using physics simulations to allow the viewer to change the parameters of the rocket sled. There was also Stone Giant, Aliens vs. Triangles, and even a new version of Dawn called, well, A New Dawn. But since 2012, there hasn't really been any tech demo released like those of their heyday. Not from GPU makers, anyway. In fact, it's interesting to note that some of the existing demos are actually becoming hard to find. Just this year, NVIDIA has removed all tech demos featuring female characters from their official sites, apparently in a move to erase the sexism in their history. ATI demos are gone entirely, and so, like NVIDIA's lost demos, you have to find backup archives from other places to get them. age of tech demos is, I feel, finally at an end. In order to see what your new graphics card is capable of, you must instead rely on games, and that's really kind of sad in a way. Games are wholly different experiences from loading up a tech demo, sitting back and enjoying the show. Because games are so much more complex than a tech demo, you won't see what your GPU could do if it only had to focus on rendering a single character, a scene, or scripted sequence using all its newest features. It's a different time now, a time where rendering technology isn't so much driven by new hardware features, but rather simply the speed of the hardware. A time of diminishing returns, perhaps, as the room for progress continues to shrink. Ah, maybe I'm just an aging millennial seeking to rekindle the old thrill I got to experience in my youth, when graphics technology moved by massive leaps over a short span of time. Getting to see that progress through tech demos was one of the great joys of PC gaming in the yesteryears. Maybe you're someone that feels the same way. If so, I hope this video helped bring that back. Thanks for watching. This has been Pixel Pipes. Yeah.